Welcome friends to another video. Hopefully this is gonna be informative and educational. This video is in response to the legend that is Doily Burger. Um, thank you Doily Burger for your request for a video about how to set up a training plan. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about a couple of the key points you need to consider when thinking about setting up, structuring a training plan. Now predominantly I'm gonna talk about Ironman because that's the event I'm training for this year. And predominantly those are the kind of athletes that I'm coaching, those looking towards Ironman um, or, or possibly half Ironman. So that's, that's where my knowledge and qualifications lie. So I think there are three key things that you need to think about when structuring a plan. One of those is periodization, uh, and there are various schools of thought on periodization, but we'll cover that. The second is on limiters, and the third point is about specificity, which is easy to say. Okay, so if we talk about periodization, for most people, particularly for those who are new to the sport, you're gonna to wanna to be looking at a traditional periodization program. So what that really means is it, you break your year down, you work back from your event, so ideally you want you know, probably six months, but you know, four to six months where you're building towards that event with that key event in mind. And you can work back from there. So you've got the event. You normally then have a taper, perhaps two week taper, depends how you do it, between two and four weeks of tapering. Before that, you're gonna have a race specific peaking phase where you're really tuning in all your training towards those race specific efforts and really just tuning in your fitness, dialing it in to the kind of efforts that you want to, to produce on race day. Before that, you're gonna have your build phase, which again, you'd probably split in half. Um, the half closest to the race is gonna be, again, building, but building with the specifics of the race in mind. The half before that, the earlier half in the year, is really about building volume and quality of training. Before build, and working backwards again, it's a bit of a strange way of doing it, but that's your traditional base phase. And for most people, that means volume, that means consistency, that means getting the body really prepared for the level of intensity and the level of volume of a race that you're doing. If you're doing an Ironman, it's gonna take you somewhere between say eight and 15 hours. You need to have the volume in your body so that you're prepped to be able to handle that kind of volume on race day. Also, most simplistically, I've always found that off of a good quality base build, a bit like we spoke about before, if you've got a big volume of training, the body's consistent, it's ready, off of that base platform, you can build real speed and sharpness. But if you haven't got that quality and, and size of base under you, it's much more challenging to kick on from that. And the first phase that often goes forgotten in a periodization program is just a prep phase. Um, you know, if you've come off of a winter or you've, you've had a year off or you've never done it before, you need to give the body one, two, three weeks really of just doing some consistent work, getting your body ready to actually start training. If you just go you know, flying into a training program, it's probably gonna cause you some injuries, you're probably gonna get overtired, overtrained, over fatigued. So what you need to do is spend a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, doing just consistent zone two stuff, the kind of stuff I'm doing at the moment, just keeping yourself ticking over, but with consistency, and it tops up to sort of 10 to 15 hours a week in my case, but what that means is next week, when I start training properly, my body's ready, it knows what's coming, and I should be able to handle the kind of load that is thrown at me. So I hope that makes sense of working backwards from the end in mind, building those timescales in, and that makes it a lot easier to plan and structure in where you want to be. But the key elements of that periodization are prep phase, base phase, build phase, moving into a peak and race specific phase, where you've then got a taper and then it's race day. So that's a real basic quick whistle stop through periodization. Um, there are other schools of thought. You can reverse periodize and things like that. But I think for, for most people, a traditional periodization program is gonna be best. The second of my three key points for today are limiters. And what I mean by that is, when you look at the event that you're gonna do, you need to look at what are you, currently, what's holding you back? Where are your weaknesses? What are your limiters to achieving what you want to on race day? Now, for some people, you may have come from a cycling background, so you're a strong cyclist. And knowing that, you know, you might therefore be a, a weaker swimmer and therefore need to focus more of your attentions on swimming than you do on the bike or the run. For some people, it may be the length of the run. You know, if you're doing a marathon at the end of an Ironman long day, have you got the fitness to, to see that run through and keep it strong through the full 42K of a run? So what it means is being really honest with yourself, dialing into each of those three disciplines and looking at the specific areas that you need to focus on. 
Now, if, if you're a seasoned athlete and you've been doing this for a number of years, it may be more specific. So for example, not just the fact that the swim might be your weakness, it could be that perhaps you know that your swim endurance is weak and the, so at the back end of the swim in the race, that's when you start to tire, which means you're getting onto the bike tired. Things like that. Bike, it may be you know that your cadence drops at the back end of a ride, therefore you're using more muscular and therefore your run is gonna be challenged. All these sorts of things, but be honest with yourself Look at the limiters that you need to look at. And if you're early and new to the sport, they could be quite general, so endurance. Most of the guys I coach, they come to me and they say, right, I wanna do this, I wanna get faster, I wanna do this time. And they're obsessed with speed. But for most people, if you're doing an Ironman or a long distance event, speed is not really the issue. For most of us, it's about not slowing down and making sure you've got the endurance to get you to the finish line. Speed comes a lot, lot later and that's the icing on the cake, if you like, once you've got a few under your belt. So focusing on those limiters is really, really important. The third key element, or golden nugget, if you will, is specificity. Specificity. What I mean by that is really thinking about the event that you're doing, the type of efforts, um, powers, speeds, and heart rates that you're gonna be operating at during race day, and, and thinking about tuning in your training sessions to that level of effort. I mean, if you're doing an Ironman, an Ironman is an incredibly aerobic event. You know, you're not going that fast in the grand scheme of things. You're not doing four and five zone efforts. It's top of zone two, bottom of zone three, and that is where you're gonna be for a whole day. So those are the areas that you need to be strong or strongest in, and making sure that you're efficient and comfortable in those zones. Thinking that through, following that idea through to your training sessions themselves, you need to apply that kind of intensity and effort that race day is gonna to bring to be the focus of your session. So longer intervals at the appropriate types of intensity are gonna get your body used to that kind of session and that kind of feeling. If you're in the pool, it's gonna be longer sets of two, four, eight hundreds. On the bike, longer intervals between 20 minutes and an hour at the right kind of intensity. Running, it's base, it's get your body prepped to be able to be on your feet for that long. Now we don't wanna do all of our training at that, but what it does mean is that don't come into this mindset if you've come from a short course background or if you've come from a biking background. Yes, we need to do you know 20% of our training roughly in, in those higher intensity zones to, to push our fitness and get ourselves where we need to be, but the bulk of our training, and it's really key to keep in your mind that Ironman triathlon, even half Ironman triathlon, they're aerobic events. So specificity of your training. And the one other point I'd say about that is that every training session that you do should have a reason. Get rid of the junk mileage, you know, just sitting on the turbo for an hour or on Zwift for a couple of hours because it, you've got the time to do it. Make that session work for you. You know, if you're on Zwift, you know, perhaps do some lower cadence work every time you're going up a climb, you know, thinking about building strength into the legs. What you don't want to do is just junk, junk volume. You don't need it. You could train less, do more quality, and it will get you where you need to be. So I hope that's helpful as an introduction to building a training plan and the kind of ideas you want to employ. Chuck your comments and questions below and I'll do my best to help out where I can. I hope that gives you a few ideas that you can build on uh, in terms of trying to structure your own training program. Good luck for the year ahead and keep watching.